Okay, we are going to review inequalities, solving, writing interval notation, writing inequality notation, and graphing them, and some key things that we need to remember. I am going to be writing this down. You should also be writing this down. If you're in my current class, you'll be writing this on the inside of the cover of your unit four packet. Okay, so inequalities deal with these symbols that look like this. We have less than and we have greater than. Those symbols deal with a graph that has an open circle. It deals with an interval notation that has parentheses. And these things always go with infinity signs as well. We also have the less than equal to greater than equal to symbols, which pair up with your closed circles for your graphs and your brackets for your interval notation. Now what I mean by that is if we have an inequality, let's say x less than or equal to four, this would be your inequality notation. You would also be able to show that as a graph where there is an equal to sign, so I need the corresponding circle which is closed. And my inequality symbol points to the left, so that's which way my graph should go. Okay, and that is the graph for an inequality solution. And then lastly, we have the interval notation. Interval notation always goes from left to right. The furthest left in this case is going to be negative infinity because I have an arrow which tells me it goes on and on and on and on and on in. And it stops at four. Now infinities always get the parentheses whether it's positive or negative, doesn't matter. And in this case, I have a closed circle, so I'm gonna have to use a bracket. The parenthesis implies that the value is not included in the solution. In this case, infinity is not actually a value, so it cannot be included. Whereas four has a closed circle, our inequality states that x is less than or equal to four, which means four is included and that's where we get the bracket from. So this is your interval notation and it is imperative that you know the difference between the two. Okay, so let's say we have something to solve for. If I'm working with three X minus four less than or equal to 12, I would go ahead and solve this as I would a regular equation by isolating my variable x. So the inverse of minus four would be to add four on both sides, which would cancel that out. We have three x come down, less than equal to, remains the same, and 12 plus four is 16. Ooh, I didn't do this right, that's okay. Then I would have to get rid of my three. I'm going to multiply by one third to do our multiplicative inverse. That would cancel out my threes and I would have x less than or equal to 16 over three. It is okay to get a fraction. It wasn't my intention, but it happened. So I'm going to graph that 16 over three, there is an equal to sign, so I will have a closed circle. And again, my arrow is pointing to the left, so that's where my graph will go. And the interval notation will be negative infinity to 16 over three, with the bracket because circle. Another example, a little bit longer, a little bit harder, would be three times x minus eight plus four x equal to eight x plus four. If I were going to solve this one, sorry, greater than or equal to, first thing I would have to do is distribute on my left. 
3x minus 24 plus 4x greater than or equal to 8x plus 4. Combine like terms, 3x and 4x is going to give me 7x minus 24 greater than or equal to 8x plus 4. And now if you follow my technique, which would be to move the variable first and move the smaller one, we would take 7x away from both sides. This gives me negative 24 greater than or equal to 1x plus 4, and then I'll take 4 away on both sides. Now the problem with this is that I now have put my variable on the right side. When you're dealing with inequalities, you want to get your variable to the left side as often as possible. Since I'm finished and my x is on the right, I'm going to have to flip this entire thing around. So just like you were taking a selfie, if you flip the camera image, everything turns around, not just your face. The background changes, everything goes with it. So we do the same thing. If we're going to put the x on the left, we have to flip our sign and our number. That would be your solution. If I were to graph it, I again have a closed circle, negative 28, arrow pointing this way, negative infinity to negative 28, bracket and parenthesis. Speaking of flipping things around, there is one time where you need to flip the sign. And that is when you multiply or divide by a negative. Okay, so some key things to remember. Flipping the sign when you divide by negative having your x on the left so that your graph matches the inequality sign correctly. And you might want to write down all of these over here and memorize them to know what goes with what and what is called what. That's all I have for you.